Hello, friends. Weaving friends, spinning friends, all you yarn friends. Well, I'm back home. I'm still working on finishing this shawl. Starting to clip off some of the stray little pieces. I've got a couple more here. The mauve uh, plum color, which is the wool, the superwash wool, it did a really good job of um, puffing up. And it's the yarns there are doing a great job of closing up all the little holes. Not so much the bamboo, which I wouldn't have expected. Now, I have decided to start hand twisting the fringe. As long as you're not in a hurry, it's not a really big deal. I've heard people say that their thumbs hurt when they do it. Maybe, uh, and it's true, and it, it does get tiring. I think uh, as you're watching me do these two, I've got these two here that I'm going to twist together. You see, these are applied together. I guess you call it twisted together. You want to twist until... This, this is a triple strand of yarn right here. You want to twist until it just gets a little bit smaller. It should be pretty twisty. The first one I did over here, let me see, pull it into the camera. This very first one, I didn't twist enough. I was afraid of over twisting and you see how it's a little bit uh, too loose. And the rest of them, I've tied, I twist them until they start to pigtail up like that, okay? And make sure you do both. And you really have to hang on to that tail. And you have to twist it down as long as you can to the bottom. Um, you won't be able to keep it that way, but you want to get as much twist as you can. And then you hold the ends really well together. And then I like to kind of pull it out. And you're going to tie a little knot with both of them. Okay. Pull them through. Now you really want to work this knot down the length of that fringe, that double fringe, as far as you can go. Um, you don't want the knot to get stuck up high. So it kind of is, might be helpful. And of course, if you've got pigtails in there, that makes it even a little trickier. I'm going to have to pull it through that. There, that's better. Okay, and then when you're done, that extra twist makes it do that. If you don't have that extra pigtail twist in it, it won't tighten up as well, okay? And so the pigtail twist kind of turns into that twist, and then I am trimming it on the bottom. I really like the one that has half blue and half plum. Isn't that pretty? And then that one's kind of fun looking too. So I'm real pleased with this. I think that these look a whole lot better. I did wash this. Um, I washed it and put it in the dryer too. And so although it didn't totally frizz out, the ends here are frizzed out. Okay. This is not really very attractive as fringe at this point. And the bamboo kind of, um, that's not a fringe, but the bamboo fringe kind of came apart. Okay. But when you do this, it takes care of all of that. So I'm definitely pleased with this, and I'll continue on both ends. I'm thinking about making a fringe twister with my husband's help. We looked at it online. Um, the little alligator clips that I have are not the right kind. These are the kind that you have for hair bows, but they need to have teeth in there, okay, so they can really grab a hold. I know that much. So uh, we're going to get the ones at the hardware store that have the teeth in there so that when you, like if, if I do this on here, it's not enough to hold it. I tried that, and it was not strong enough. Anyway, all right, so continuing on the shawl. I really think it'll be nice when I get it all finished. It's time to do a little fringe twisting. Now, I must say, after doing a little bit of this, that um, it is time consuming. It doesn't hurt my thumbs any more than my thumbs already hurt. <laughs> and uh, the hardest part of it is the knot, okay? And having a fringe twister, the little mechanism that you can make or order, is not going to help you with the knot. You always have to tie the knot yourself by hand. So um, I'm debating whether I really want a fringe twister because I would put it on the fringe and then I would twist, 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 and then I would have to take it off the fringe and then do the knot. Um, it would save me a little bit of time, but I don't know that it would make it a whole lot easier. And honestly, time is what I have. So I'm going to, I'm going to fringe twist this by hand, this shawl, because it's about the biggest thing I would ever have fringe on. And see how much I hate it. If I hate it, maybe I'll like it. If 
I'll watch a little video. Oh, speaking of videos, I have started watching, um, what's her name? Penelope Keith. She does um, a YouTube channel called Hidden Villages. They're the villages in, in England. Penelope Keith was on Good Neighbors, the British show years ago about the couple who decided to have a farm in suburbia. She was the neighbor. She was Margot. Okay, she was also the lady of the manor on To the Manor Born. She's hilarious. And um, she's a little older here, but I really like the show. Anyway, that's probably what I'm going to be binge watching while I twist my fringe. So without any more gabbing, let's do some fringe. Taking a little break from that fringe twisting, and I want to—I'm—I'm—I'm I'm, I'm messing with all of my uh, loose ends and trimming them off. Okay, and the ones like this, where I was changing color from the plum to the blue, I tended to um, go ahead and do them in the body of the work instead of right along the edge, and they don't really show. I mean, while it's true that um, let's look at this one. This is where the plum end is. And here's where the blue end is. And you can see that there's a line of plum here that's higher. There's no plum over here. But you're not going to notice that. With those two colors, you're never going to see it. So th these um, these joints are easy. I just snip them off and they just disappear. The yellow ones are more problematic, okay? Because as I was weaving along, I was like, oh, well, I don't want to do it on the end. And so I would um, I only wanted just these little double dotted rows of yellow but where I join them of course I'm going to end up with four that looks terrible I mean it's that's really an obvious difference and when you're weaving you kind of have to do it that way but what I really should have done is to leave the yellow ends here because what I'm having to do is I'm pulling out these yellows I'm pulling them all the way out to the end and then I'm reweaving them I'm overlaying them with this primary line I'm removing the secondary joint line and I'm re stitching, re sewing them, re weaving them with a needle right along this line. And I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to take this one out and I'm going to re weave it in with this one so that they're, it'll look a little bit thicker, but it won't look as awful as that. Okay. So let me do that um, and I'll show you after I'm done. Okay, I took that first yellow out and I've threaded this needle. You can see I've laid it right next to that line of yellow. And now I pulled that needle through and I snipped off the end right there. Okay, so it looks a lot better. Now I'm going to do this one over here and I'll show you that too. Thank you. 
Now that's not perfect, but it is so much better, don't you think? Supper tonight is a wonderful soup. It's just a taco soup, and you may find this hard to believe, but I've never made taco soup before. This one is really chunky though, it's very thick. It's almost more like a stew and so easy. Here's the ingredients. Hamburger. I'm also putting an onion in and then all these cans you just dump into the pot and two packages of dressing. So if you want an easy yummy soup at night we're gonna have this with a little bag salad from Walmart and call ourselves done. Here's the onions that are gonna go in in a second and then I'm just gonna simmer it for the next two to three hours. I can't wait to have a nice bowl of this with some cheese and sour cream. Good morning, YouTube world. It's a beautiful morning, and uh, I don't even know what time it is. Maybe 8 o'clock, 8.30. And um, it's already warm enough I'm taking my barn coat off when I get active, I'm back here at the barn, as you can see behind me, uh, and I'll show you what I'm doing. It's burn barrel time again. I had a, I have a good, pretty good sized pile here. This is wood that came from the project in the little house, um, and it was kind of sitting over there looking junky, and I promised our daughter we would get rid of it. So I'm burning that up today, along with a lot of, of yard stuff, uh, branches. These trees are always losing branches, it's constant. Also, well, mostly I'm sitting here resting with the dogs. There's Tricky. Let me zoom in on Tricky. See how she's lying in the shadow, the slim shadow of that pecan tree? I think that's hilarious. That's East over there, so she's got that. She'll have to rotate like a clock hand as the day goes on. Uh, of course, we left the cat in the house. Bobo is over here near me, as Pomeranians will be. Good morning, Bobo. Um, I am doing a little teeny thing in the garden. Let me go show you. I'm cleaning up my elderberry trees. You can see that they're starting to leaf out. And um, I really wanted to get them, I wanted to get them under control. The weeds were awful in there, as tall as the trees were. And this one's really spreading out, not so much up, but I don't really care. Um, they still need to be weeded to run the outside, but I'm more concerned with the inside. It's a nice big truck tire. That one's really tall. This was my first elderberry. This was a daughter elderberry that I planted, propagated off of that one. Cleaned that one out. This is a smaller tire bed that Adam made, much shorter. So it gets overwhelmed by outside grass pretty fast, but they're all looking really good. See, this one's... That one's leafing out too. They're all this, and tomorrow's gonna be warmer than today. So yeah, it's gonna be quite warm. I'm not gonna need a coat tomorrow. I have two large rosemary plants by the house. This is one I put back here in the garden. It was given to me by a friend who was moving from her house. It was in this pot on a ledge, and it was just about dead. And she said, "Yeah, I don't want it. Do you want it?" And I had pity on the poor thing. I don't like to see anything die from neglect and. I had a million things to do, so I put it back here in this tire bed. I forget what used to be in there. Um, but it has survived in spite of neglect again. Um, it really needs to be weeded on the outside, but I did get some of the weeds taken out of the inside of the tire. Now this is the asparagus bed. The stuff over here, that's all grass. Some of this in here is leftover asparagus stuff. Actually, a good bit of it is. And asparagus will be coming up in there soon, but it's just frightful. I can't decide if I want to keep this or not. It's not like it would be hard to weed out. I just have other things I need to do and want to do. Asparagus is hard to start, though. I started this from seed, and I hate to just say goodbye to it. So I can't, I can't decide what to do. But that's, I'm being honest, this is the state of things. And this is my very weird elderberry tub because I also stuck some lavender in there that I really thought was going to die anyway, and then it didn't. So now I have an elderberry tree 
that's taking up that space and lavender that's taking up that space and the lavender is continuing to thrive it used to have a big old ant a fire ant bed in it you can see the remnants of it in there um, a big old mound that kind of it didn't seem to mind being wrapped up in fire ants of course i couldn't get to it and then finally i kicked it and messed with the fire ants enough that they moved their mound out here and i stepped in them this morning by accident but i'm wearing my boots so i was safe from fire ant bites um these elderberry trees are really looking good and so just to give you an idea of what they look like before i clean them up if you haven't seen before now this is my smallest elderberry it's rather pitiful it only has two branches but this is what these beds look like before I take they're really not that hard to clean out I have a shovel and I've put some of that compost that I'm trying to spread around I've put that in these beds as well and um, I think that'll help nourish them a little bit so this is the last one I have to do when I take breaks in burning my barrel I'm gonna get this last one done and then at least my elderberries out here will be fine otherwise my trip to West Virginia interrupted all of my garden work which was a happy thing. All right, I'll check in with y'all later. Well, I'm back again for one more thing. As you can tell, this particular video is just full of this and that, and this is the last this and that that I have to offer. But I wanted to catch you up a little bit on Adam's making of books. I'm so proud of him. He's made some really beautiful things. Um, these three books that I'm going to show you, aren't those gorgeous? <laughs> these are with those marbled papers. He says that these books are technically called pamphlets. And the type of binding on it is a pamphlet binding. This is that um, book cloth that he made and he used the paste or the glue or whatever it was to make it nice and hard and then he wrapped the edges and then he put this um, beautiful marble paper. And what I just love is the inside finish. Doesn't that just look professional? It really does. I told him he could sell these. They're blank. Um, and he wants, you know, he loves to write by hand and I think he wishes everybody else did too. I, I don't like to write by hand. I, basically, I find it awkward and difficult to write by hand with a pen. I mean, I can, obviously, and I have all my life, and my handwriting is perfectly fine. I prefer to type because it's fast and easier on my hands. But he loves to write with those fancy pens of his. And so he loves to have little books like this. He, um, he chose this one for me, which I love. I just That's just my kind of thing. But these other two are also very beautiful but this kind of paper is really expensive and um comparatively speaking and so we went to the thrift store yesterday and he looked for some all their hardcover books are a dollar <laughs> so he looked for their really big coffee table picture books really nice picture books high quality paper beautiful images and pictures for the end papers probably not for the cover like this i guess i don't really know what he's going to do with it. I have to catch you up on that. But um, he's got so many different types of bindings and different types of books. And some of them are thick books and some of them are thin books. He hasn't yet finished the one with the leather roping. I'll have some pictures here at the end uh, with Leo, our cat, with that. He hasn't finished that book yet. Um, but he's been, he's been working on these. And he's got his uh, paper and bookmaking studio set up in the little house and I'm gonna to have to catch you up on that as well sometime soon but it's looking it's looking like a like a studio over there he's very creative in his own right so that's what's going on with this I know that you think these are as beautiful as I do and um I think I'm gonna take mine that he's given me and I'm going to it's not it's not a book for painting in it's not watercolor painting but I think I will put some poetry in it maybe no, it's hard to decide. Once you start writing on it, you know, it's it's there permanently. So that's what's going on with Adam's project. And he is making huge strides in learning his craft. All right. I think that's it for this video, as far as I know. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>